In the previous episode, we have described the 17 elementary particles that are contained in the standard model of particle physics. In this episode, we will continue this exploration by combining quarks together to create hadrons. And we will describe the type of composite particles you need to know about within the IB Physics program. Well, now we have a complete picture. 12 particles of matter, 4 exchange particles, and 1 outlier, the Higgs boson that gives mass to the other particles. This scheme is called the standard model. A model is a representation of reality. And, well, this is the best representation we have for reality at a small scale. Emerges from it the different things we know, we are familiar with, at a macroscopic level. Now, let's explore a little bit more the quarks. The quarks combine and allow us to have nuclei but they can do other things too. Particles of the standard model are called elementary particles. Why elementary? Because you cannot cut them, and according to our knowledge today, you cannot show that they are made of smaller things. So they are elementary, they are fundamental. <laughs> but when you combine them, you can create stuff. For instance, if I combine quarks together, I get hadrons. So I can combine two, three, or even four quarks together and get composite particles, which are called hadrons. The most common ones are hadrons containing two quarks and three quarks. Recently has been discovered hadrons with four quarks, and there's even some hints of hadrons with five quarks, but nothing is sure on this one. If you combine th three quarks together, you get baryons. Well, you know baryons. Neutrons and protons are baryons, because they are made of three quarks. So, you have protons, and neutrons. We have seen that the quarks have charges, electric charges. Two-thirds for the happy ones and minus one-third for the depressed ones. They also have something called a baryon number, which is one-third for all of them. So, when you combine three of them, you get one-third plus one-third plus one-third, one baryon. For instance, a proton has got a charge of plus one, meaning it's made of two ups and one down. Two-thirds of charge plus two-thirds of charge minus one-third of charge, giving you a charge of one. So, a proton is up, up, down. It's got a charge of 1 and a baryon number of 1 third by 3, 1. Neutrons are also baryons. So they are made of 3 quarks. The baryon number will be 1 third plus 1 third plus 1 third equals 1. But their charge, as you know, is 0. They are made of 1 up and 2 downs. 2 thirds minus 1 third minus one-third. So, a neutron can be written UDD. The charge is zero and the baryon number is one. 
That's about what you need to know for the IB concerning baryons. There are other baryons made of various combinations, like the sigma or the omega, but you don't need to know these. If they appear at the test, they will be uh, explained, they'll be detailed. Now, if I combine two quarks, I get mesons. Now, before I go further, I need to explain that the standard model made of these particles exists in another version, in a mirror version called antimatter. If this is ma matter, there is a kind of a cousin or a mirror version of these particles made of antimatter, for instance, antiquarks and antileptons. The mass of each of the particles is the same for matter and antimatter, but the different characteristics, like the baryon number or the charge, will be of opposite sign. For instance, an, the antimatter version of the up will be the anti-up that you write like this, U but with a bar on it, and it will have a charge of minus two-thirds and a baryon number of minus one-third. So you see the characteristics are just of opposite sign. Now, mesons are not baryons. So, if I combine two matter uh, quarks, I get a baryon number of two-thirds. But these are not baryons. Mesons have got a baryon number of zero. So, they have to be made of a quark and an antiquark. For instance, there's a one category, which I call pions, which is made of up and down. So, for instance, if I use up and anti-up, well, I get a pion. If I use down and anti-down, I also get a pion. These are pi zeros. They don't have any charge. You see, two-thirds minus two-thirds is zero. But you can also have charged pions. If, for instance, I put an up and an anti-down, well, there will be two-thirds and minus minus one-third, so one. So here, I will have a positive pion with one shot. Uh, uh, also, I could have an anti-up and a down, and I would get, try to guess it, yes, a pi minus, because I have minus two-thirds, minus one-third in charge, so minus one. And you see the baryon numbers, where because I have matter and antimatter, it's going to be one-third minus one-third each time, giving me a baryon number of zero. Mesons come also in different types. One of these types are counts. So counts are also made of up and downs, but they also all have a strange uh, quark in them. For instance, you would have the up anti-strange. So the charge of uh, this maison would be two-thirds plus one-third. So a charge of one, so it would be, sorry, k plus. Right? So you have different types of cows. You can have, for instance, an anti down strange, where that would be one-third minus one-third, so that would be a k zero. Uh, these are the different uh, particles, particle names you need to know. There's a standard model and the particles you can make by combining the quarks. So that's it for today. We have seen the standard model and the different names, right? And we have seen also the different names of the particles, the composite particles that are formed when combining uh, quarks together. These are about all the names you need to remember for the IB. So look at this picture, and this is about what you need to know. Well, you need to know a bit more, so there will be more episodes. For instance, uh, we'll talk about leptons and bosons maybe a bit further, and also how these particles can react between them. So stay tuned for the next episode. I hope it was useful to you, and uh, if you enjoyed it, and if it was useful, please subscribe to the channel. And I'll see you for the next episode of 
Physics Made Easy. Ciao.